I like game dev books. Okay, that went a bit too extreme. And I have been talking about some of these, like for example, this book and this book and this one. I have made videos on these individual books on this YouTube channel. There's a playlist about that, the book club one, where I'll link it down below. And I talk about the lessons from one of these books in like an entire video. However, at this point, I have read, I think like 20 books almost about game development. And there's no way that I can make dedicated videos about all of them. Like some of them are also like very small and like there's some good stuff in here, but it's not good enough for me to make an entire video about it. So I figured, Let's do the classical bite me special, make a tier list of them. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. What I have here with me is a tier list of I think 14 books in total, or like there's one entry that counts as two books that I have read that I have somewhat enjoyed that I didn't like drop out halfway. There are some books that I have done that way as well. And I'm just going to be talking about what I liked about the books and I'll be putting them on my signature tier list of what books are good and bad. Now. I know usually these tier lists, I am accompanied by Thomas. He's not with us, unfortunately, because he does not have time to read books. And that would mean that this would be a pretty boring conversation because I would be talking on my own anyway. So I may as well drop the dead weight. And speaking of dropping things, let's go straight into the first book, which is Blood, Sweat and Pixels by Jason Schreier. This book, we're going immediately with a heavy hitter. If you're remotely interested into game development, you've probably heard about it or considered reading it. This is the book that I'm 100% serious got me into game development. It's that good. And what it talks about is not specifically how to be successful, how to start a game dev studio or whatever, but it talks about 10 different stories of studios of various sizes. So it talks about the story of Stardew Valley up until like how I think it was Diablo 3 or Starcraft 2, one of those games like the big Blizzard games, how they were turned into console ports, which is something like very weird. Or for example, how a failed game at launch still managed to recover and be something. Yeah, that was, I think, Diablo 3. Actually became a success still. So it talks about all kinds of studios and the process of dealing with making those games. I think Shovel Knight was one of them as well, of like the indies. And reading this book, honestly, was the thing that I was like, man, this is so cool. I want to be part of this. And for better or worse, here I am two years later as a game developer. So I think we have a lot of books. So I'm not going to go too deep in all of them. Uh, if there are certain books on this list, by the way, that you do feel like, hey, I want to learn more about them, leave a comment down below. Or if you have books as well that you want me to read and think it could be good standalone videos as well, leave them in the comments down below. And I'm always looking for more books. So I think honestly, is this an S tier book? Thomas is not here to beat me, honestly. Um, I would not put it at S tier maybe, but I would put it as at least a solid A in terms of this is a book that if you're considering getting into game dev, this is like your first foray, you've watched a few of her videos like that, make a studio in three months or game dev plan for 2024. This book is going to be really good in understanding how is the game dev landscape. So definitely really good one. I am going to be putting this as an A tier. All right, so next up I have two in one basically because I find these books are somewhat similar and that is Level Up. This is a chunky book. Like I could kill a man with this by Scott Rogers. And then the other book is The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses, third edition. It's generally the most recent one. And both of these books, they talk about the entire process of making games. If you, leaving the code part aside, if you want to make a game and you can only read one book, go either for this one or the book of lenses. Honestly, personally, I prefer this one, but the concepts they talk about, such as game design, level design, things like interacting with your player, user experience, choose, all of it is in this chunky boy. And same with the art of game design, a book of lenses. So there's no single thing really. That's why I wanted to make a book club video about this as well, but I was so overwhelmed of, okay, what do I talk about? Because this is everything you need to know to make a game. I think some of the highlights that I think this book does really well and that I have learned the most about is very stupid stuff as well. Like how the different kinds of camera controllers, how to deal with things like clipping your camera, which is something we're currently struggling with with Guild Architect, because those things are things that you don't really think about. You think about, okay, I need a core gameplay loop. I need the game to be fun and things like that. But there is a lot of like very small, somewhat boring stuff as well in these books that you should know if you're making games. So honestly, I think these books are really solid. The issue is these are like 
treat these like textbooks. You are not going to be reading this in like the evenings before you go to sleep, like some regular like fiction book. These are things that you're going to be spending months on, reading, taking notes, learning about, rereading multiple things as well. And similar with The Art of Game Design, Book of Languages. These books are really solid, but because they take so much time to go through, I don't want to put them at S tier, but I do think these two are definitely A tiers at least in terms of figuring out how am I actually going to make a game? How am I going to prototype and things like that? This next book I have talked about in a book club dedicated video as well, which is How to Make a Video Game All by Yourself by Matt Hackett. It's a small, cutesy little book. Like, I think it's a 180-ish pages. Yeah, 200 pages. It has like nice, cute drawings into it. I talked about this in the book club video as well. I think in general, this book is pretty solid. It's a, I, I mean, even with the cute format, I think the best way I can describe it is like baby's first game dev book. Like it's not going to be groundbreaking in any regards, but it's really approachable. So when I read this book, like I read this book one and a half years already as a game developer, I did not learn that much new. There are a lot of things in this book, but they're all somewhat surface level still. Whereas something like this and this, they are basically, they talk about the same concepts. However, this one goes into like 10 times more depth than this one. So things like scoping, things like game field, things like behavioral patterns of like, okay, how do you make sure your UI makes sense? This book covers it very briefly, but is not as in-depth about it. But the advantage is that you can read this in like a few days at most. Like I read it in a day because of course I knew a bunch of the stuff already. Because of that, it's also more questionable in terms of how much value are you gonna get out of it. I think it is a good book in terms of its delivery, in terms of its writing, but there are other things that I'm not fully 100% agreeing with. And I think I'm looking at the graph right now, of where am I gonna put it on the tier list? And I'm very conflicted because I feel like it could be a B tier, but I think a B tier is like maybe slightly too high. So I'm gonna do my signature move and I'm gonna put it at like a B minus instead. It's a decent book. You're not going to be disappointed, I think, with having it or like on your shelf, but I also don't think that if you have only this book, you're going to be making a successful game anytime soon. And that brings me to Long Term Game by Joachim Achenen. I always mispronounce his last name. I made a video about this book club of last month. I'll link it up there as well. And I think what this book does really well that I think isn't covered as much in game development, which is also why I originally made this YouTube channel in the first place, is talking about financials of game development. Now, my main issues with this book is that the developer is very much focused on mobile games, whereas our audience, as far as I can tell, and at least me, are more focused on the Steam way of doing games. He also talks about things like venture capital because it is much more common with those in-app purchase like mobile games versus the one-time purchase Steam PC games. So it's not as applicable there, but for things like managing a team, which is something that if you wanna grow your studio, you're going to have to do, or if you have like a bunch of people getting together to work on a game, are extremely important. Now, some other issues I had with it is like a pretty short book. I paid for this myself, it was like 25 euros. I don't know if it was that worth it, especially because this book is basically just a collection of blog posts that he has for free on his website and like ordered in this neat little book. So looking at the graph, I think this would be a, a C tier. I still like the book, but this book definitely isn't for every game developer. This is really, if you have a studio, and you have multiple people working at that studio, which already eliminates like 85% of my audience. Sorry, I still love you guys. But I think if you are going for a more business focused approach, this is a pretty solid book. Now, I also wanna do a quick plug here. If you are focusing on that business approach and you wanna know more about game dev business, there's a link down below that goes to our Patreon. Every week there, we make an extra video that is like more in depth about certain things we've learned. We go into the full financials of our studio as well. So if you wanna know exactly how much we spend, how much runaway we have, all of those things are covered on there. I think it's a great value, honestly. And what I uploaded yesterday there is a video where I tier listed the business books that I've read and how I think they can be good for game development. So I think if you really are like, hey, I wanna go into this professionally, go ahead to the link down below. Our Patreon is a goldmine at this point in terms of 
extra deep dives. We talk about publishers, we talk about Kickstarter. We even have sample contracts for publishers so you can really see what are red flags in publishing contracts and things like that. I think you're going to get a lot of value out of it if you are going for that more professional approach and not just, I make games. And this next book is Doom Guy Life in First Person by John Romero. This book is somewhat recent and I read it last year, I think. And this is one of those books that when you read it, it's not 100% immediately applicable to game design. It's not like you're going to read this book and you're going to be making better games. This is more of a entertainment book is what I would like to call it. Also, I like, I'm kind of a fanboy of the old school it software days. I wish Bite Me Games could be like that, like, successful but also have that culture not the most healthy but still i kind of idolize it and i think reading books like this are very entertaining for me they also teach me a bit more about how was life back then how was life as a game dev in like before the 2020s like back in the old school days 40 years ago at this point point. and depending on who you are that's a good or a bad thing i'll be honest this book talks a lot about John Romero's personal life as well, which isn't always like the most interesting. If you are someone like me who cares about id Software, who cares about the background, the games they made and the failures they made, like Daikatana is covered as well in this book, then go for it. But I think if you're purely looking at, okay, I want to become a better game developer, this isn't really the book for you. So I think I would put it at a D tier because of that. This next book is one that I have been planning a video on for a long time, but I'm sorry the author sent me this copy, like I think a few months ago at this point. I'm really sorry that I haven't made a video of this book yet, but it's just that the topic is great. It's lean game development, which like lean and agile. We've talked a bit on this channel about project management as well, where I pull up this book somewhere in the video as well. However, I haven't been able to turn this into a full book club video because it's a bit short. And I'll be honest, some of the things in here, at least to me, are not groundbreaking. If you've ever read a book like Lean Startup, for example, or anything about Agile, you don't even have to read a book about it. Basically any video that is like somewhat basic, 90% of that is covered in here. Also, the book talks a lot about like unit testing in C-sharp. That's not something that I can easily make a video about because like, not that many people in our audience even program in Unity to begin with. But I feel like, hey, I should still give you this one, Julia. Um, so I didn't pay for this one. I'll let you know that in advance. I think apart from this one as well, I got for free. All the other books in this list I did pay for with my own hard-earned money. If you really have no clue how Lean and Agile work, you can read this book. But I don't know, we've made some videos at this point about Agile structure and things like that. But I think a problem that these books have for a lot of game developers is that they procrastinate making their game by instead sticking to all of the lean like principles like oh i have to do retrospectives even though i'm on my own and i have to do sprint planning and sure you have to do those things some of them are good but other things are like i have to do planning poker and then i have to calculate my velocity and i'm just sitting like brother in christ you haven't even started up unity in like two weeks just program your game, have a Kanban board, and that's already 90% of what you need, honestly, if you're making your first games. Things like retrospectives are great. If you're working in teams, for example, having things like sprints can be good as well if you really want to get stuff out the door and ship it, which is ideal, but you don't have to do that. But those things can already be more overwhelming, especially if you're in your first stage of game dev. All of your sprint plannings are going to be horribly off because you've just never done it before and it can be demotivating. So because of that, I think that definitely if you're in your first stages of game dev, this book is not for you. I'm sorry. Um, I am going to be putting this one as a C tier as well. There is some good stuff in it as well, but it's also a bit of a trap. So I wouldn't 100% recommend it. This next book is The Creative Gene by Hideo Kojima. Most of the books that I don't have a physical copy of, by the way, if you want to know the secret to reading more books, if you're like, oh, I want to read more, kill an e-reader. Like, I don't like reading physical books. Like a lot of these books, I actually read the digital edition and I just got a physical version purely for the videos because it just looks better. But one of those books that I read is The Creative Gene by Hideo Kojima. And I read this book originally last year because I actually made a video a long time ago where I lived like Hideo Kojima for a week. I used his like daily routine. I consumed the different books and movies that he did as well, trying to learn more about the guy and see if I can get some of his genius game design and game development into our own games. Unfortunately, that did not happen. But 
I learned a bunch of it as well. Now, I think the issue with this book is that I thought it was an actual book. Like he wrote start to finish like 150, 200 pages or whatever of what he has learned, of what his life has been like. However, that's not the case. He also is a columnist in like some Japanese magazines. And this book is basically just a bunch of his columns talking about various things, talking about his upbringing, talking about some of the books that influenced him as well, but also somewhat unrelated stuff. Like for example, how there's a train line in the Kansai area where he grew up that he finds very romantic. And it's like, okay, this is good to know if you're someone who is very much a fan of everything Kojima makes. I enjoy his stuff, but I'm not like his diehard fan. So these things helped me in getting a better understanding, but I did definitely feel a bit cheated by the book and like what I learned at the end of it. It was great resources to do that video of I lived like him for a week, but in terms of actually improving as a game developer, I don't think that's the best thing. One like tip I'm gonna give you here is if you are interested in some of the more game development and game design stuff of Kojima is he has a podcast on, I think Spotify, and probably other places as well, called Brain Structure. It is available in both Japanese and English, so you can get it like dubbed basically, where he talks with people who were part of mainly like Dead Stranding. And he talks about the process of making that game and some of the things he learned about it there. I think that is going to be much more interesting than this book. So honestly, I think I love the guy Hideo Kojima, but I am going to be giving this book an E tier because from Doom Guy Life in first person, it was still one cohesive structure written by John Romero. Whereas I was missing that structure with the Kojima one. It's just a bunch of his thoughts thrown together, put into a book and that's it. I think this is also the lowest rated book on the entire list. What I expected originally from the Kojima book is actually the next book I'm gonna be talking about, which is Sid Meier's memoir, A Life in Video Games. And this one I didn't read, I read it as an audiobook while I was doing a whole bunch of driving, but I think still that counts. And this talks about Sid Meier. You've probably heard of his games, like very small games, such as Civilization or Pirates or Railroad Tycoon and whatever. And I'm gonna be honest, I had never played a Sid Meier game when I listened to this book. But I think this was actually one of the most inspiring books that I had. Because the big difference between Blood, Sweat and Pixels and Sid Meier's life is that Sid Meier, he's a regular ass dude. He has nothing that crazy about him. He was just a programmer who knew what he was doing. He knew some game design instinctively and he was at the right place at the right time, kinda. He was like at a time period. He had a really interesting life, but it was still really boring at the same time. Like some of the stories such as, for example, um, I think it's like co-founder of what, uh, I think Microprose, Bill Steely, I think his name was. He had a company like plane that he would take journalists in if they wanted. And there was like some old ads where you could fly with him basically. Those were like cool things to hear. He also talks a bit more about his, his thoughts about game design, the evolution of the game development industry as well over the past 20, 30 years. And honestly, if nothing else, the best thing that I learned from this book is that you know the thing Nuclear Gandhi, where there's this thing where, okay, if you get Gandhi, he had like an overflow error where if he was like too happy or like too peaceful, he would actually go um, all the way around to being extremely aggressive and he would nuke you in the civilization games. That's 100% BS. There's like almost an entire chapter dedicated to him being like, I don't understand where this idea comes from. We were not using integers that could overflow. This is purely constructed. I think he talks about it in like 2012 or something. Someone posted it on a forum and everyone believed it. This is your PSA. Nuclear Gandhi is made up. It's made up by the hive mind who just wants you to think it's real. If nothing else, that's already worth reading the book for. I think it's a really good look into running the studio. And also one of the things that is kind of applicable to a lot of you is he started some of his first games like working at regular programming companies. And then he shifted more and more into game development. Sure, it was back in like the 1980s and like 1990s. But still, I think there are some interesting things that you can learn from this book as well. So I'm actually going to be putting this one at, I would almost say a B tier, honestly. I really enjoyed this one, surprisingly much so, especially considering that I never played any of his games. He's a really interesting guy, even though He's nothing that's like special. Of course, he's special in the way that he made some very influential games, but he's not some extravagant person like John Romero or John Carmack. He's more down to earth and he's actually someone that I think you can learn more of. 
Now, speaking of learning things, this was a book that was the first book club that we did um, on this channel, which is the Game Dev Business Handbook with Michael Fudder. I also had the opportunity at certain points to sit down with Michael Fudder and ask him questions about our game, about our YouTube channel, what he would do. I think back then we had like 7,000 subscribers. And I generally really liked this book back then. So it's a pretty like big one already. It's not like, I'll put the, the other one next to it. It's like a half of it as most. And this one is much better in my opinion in terms of general game dev stuff. Because this is a book that I would recommend if you're actually running in a team. Whereas this book I would recommend even if you're solo. That's the big difference. The things he talks about in this book are much more applicable to solo developers as well. So it talks about a whole bunch of things. It's mainly United States focused, but still things like how do I budget my game? How do I find employees for my game? Sure, those may not be the most interesting to you, but still budgeting can be important. It talks about things like publishers, crowdfunding, making sure you have your deadlines and project management as well. This book is a very good all-in-one book for business management of a game dev studio. I really enjoyed it. Once again, when I read it, I was like one and a half years into running a game dev studio already. So some of the things were already somewhat known to me, but things like that crowdfunding chapter were something that really interested me. I'm probably not making a Kickstarter campaign anytime soon, or we're probably not going to be making an early access game anytime soon, but these things are covered in here and I think they're covered really well. So honestly, I think this is another A tier or B tier book. I'm actually not fully certain. I think definitely the art of game design is going to be more important if making a game. I'm going to put it at like an A minus. I think it's the best place to put it because I do think it's better than a full on B tier. It's something that definitely if you can go and read it. He also has a bunch of extra free like templates on his side talking about things like budgeting. There's like some spreadsheets and things like that and some other like basic accounting stuff like really studio management stuff, which is I know something that you guys are interested in. And then next up, we have Press Reset, Ruin and Recovery in the Games Industry, once again by Jason Schreier. And this was one of those books where I finished the first one, Blood, Sweat and Pixels, and I was like, I need more of this. So I ended up going for the second book, Press Reset, and I think he's working on a third one releasing end of this year, talking about the downfall of Blizzard, which is probably going to be interesting as well. This one left me a bit disappointed because, you know, the first book really hypes you up and it makes you, it's like all these amazing comeback stories almost of like the underdogs and they manage to make their game a success, like true tri tribulations and everything like that. This book talks about the opposite. This book talks about studio mismanagement, people losing their job, studios closing down really, and that's everything it talks about. It's very much a depressing book. And also Jason Schreier is more of a, big game studio journalist. He's not really as focused on the indie games. This book really talks a lot more about larger studios, AA, AAA, shutting down because they've had some very big production issues. They had projects that got canceled and whatever. It's not as applicable to an indie developer, unfortunately. And also, once again, it's like the complete opposite because Blood, Sweat and Pixel it like really hypes you up. This one, it like just keeps ramming you down. It's really hard to read. I'm someone, I read every book, basically. I don't really try to drop books. This one was a really hard to still slog through because it's not nice to read, basically. And I understand that, like, look, game dev is not nice. I've talked about that on this YouTube channel plenty of times, but I think this book isn't like as recommended reading, not just for the topics it talks about, but also just for the value it brings to you as a game developer. So I think because of that, I'm actually going to put this in an E tier as well. The book is good if you're interested in that sort of stuff, but I think there's not much value in it for our audience, smaller game development studios and things like that. The next book is Game Dev, 10 Steps to Make Your First Game Successful by Vlad Marhulets, I think it is. He's the creator of the game Dark, if I remember correctly. And this was also one of those books that were one of the first books that I read about game development because the title is very SEO friendly. If you find, like, if you look up like, game dev book he's usually one of the top authors you get however i have to be honest i did not like this book at all i wouldn't go as far to say i hated it but i think this book was probably one of the biggest disappointments i had in terms of the actual stuff that i learned about and in terms of the author and the writing style as well i read a lot of books so i have a general idea of like different writing styles i did not enjoy this writing style and i think the big problem that this book had is 
It suffered a bit from the problem I think that we had with Ford's industry on this YouTube channel is this is what I did. I had a very specific case, like in his case, like the game was dark and I did all of these steps. Hence, if you do all of these steps as well, you will have success. And that's unfortunately not how game development works. There is no magic formula. And on top of that, what I really didn't like as much about this book and the author is how it almost feels a bit elitist is what I would call it. Where if you think that I'm an entitled guy, like his books, like there was like actual full on pages where he talks about, yeah, I used to study music and I had to play like 16 hours a day and I was completely broke. I had no money, but still I had to make my game and I just kept on working until I like collapsed basically. That's not healthy. Even I know that and I do work quite an unhealthy amount already. And it's also not helpful. It's like, cool, you're alienating your reader base because that's not me. That's not what I'm looking for. And basically you're just insulting the readers that they do not have the same dedication that you have. That's like my gripe with the exact writing style, but also like the tips he gives, like the 10 steps, they're somewhat generic. Honestly, it's basically the same almost as our making a game in 2024 video that I'll link up there again, where it's very timed as well. He talks about, okay, marketing on Reddit and Twitter. Back when Twitter was still a valid marketing thing before Elon Musk just like destroyed it. It doesn't talk about the general abstracted practices as much of game design and like marketing your game or whatever. And because of that, it loses a lot of its focus and it loses a lot of the quality and the actual things you can learn, in my opinion. So because of that, honestly, I know this book is something that if you're a beginner, the title sounds very interesting, very appealing. Have your first game, be a success. But honestly, looking at it, I think on this tier list, I'm going to be making it a D tier. It talks about game dev, but I don't think it's actually going to be helping you that much. There are way better books that will help you much more in your game dev journey. And one of those books is Video Game Storytelling by Evan Skolnick. This was, I think, also once again, I think the third book I ever read or the second book I ever read about game development because when Bite Me Games started, we were going to be making an open world RPG and I was going to be the one in charge for writing the narrative. Granted, I had never written anything in my life before. I still haven't really, apart from some YouTube scripts, but I figured I'm going to learn as much as possible about video game storytelling to make a good narrative for our next game. That game never happened because we very quickly realized that open world RPGs are dumb, but I think this book was still really good in certain regards. So this book talks about the general concepts such as the hero's journey. If you've ever heard about storytelling, narrative design, whatever, you know this stuff. But if you're someone like I was back then, completely stupid in regards to actually knowing how do I structure a story? How do I have the right tension and things like that? This book is really good about like explaining that. The book has two main parts, basically. The first half of the book talks about the hero's journey, how to structure like the three act structure of your game and then the story in that game. And then the second part talks about the different roles in your studio, like gameplay programmers, game designers, level designers and whatever, how all of them get together basically to create a story. Video game narrative, it's not just writing the script and writing the dialogue and that's it. No, things like environmental storytelling are very much a thing or things like certain how, how certain mechanics work can tie into the story as well. And that second part, if you're a solo developer, it helps a bit, but it's not the best. And I think the big issue with this book, or that's some feedback I had as well when I heard about it in our Discord server, is it misses some actionable stuff. Like it's really good theory, like the three act structure and the hero's journey, but it doesn't really tell you how, where to go to next, basically. Once you've read the book, it's like, cool, you've read it. Do I just open a word now and write a giant script? No, that's not what you should do. But the book doesn't really explain that as well. So I think because of that, Looking at our list again, I think this is another C tier, or maybe it's like a little bit better than a C tier. I'm gonna give it a C plus. It is a solid book still, especially if you can read only one book on narrative design, more a high level one, this is good, but it's not going to be a book that you read and immediately you're gonna make an open world like narrative RPG like we were gonna do. I think it definitely could use some more information of next steps, but I think you can definitely find out a bit more about that. I don't have enough experience with it, but definitely keep that in mind. This book alone is not going to be enough to immediately start making a giant like story-based game. You're going to have to build into that. Maybe if you are an author or like a narrative designer, if you can chip in down below and maybe give us some good ideas in terms of how do I actually get started further with narrative design, 
I really appreciate it. And if it's a good one, I'll even pin you. So leave that down below as well. We're nearing the end of our list. This one is another book about the it guys. I know I am biased. I wanted to pad this list maybe a little bit. It's called Masters of Doom by David Kushner. So whereas Doom Guy Life in First Person was an autobiography basically of John Romero, Masters of Doom was written by a third party where they just wanted to basically document the entire process of it software. How did they get started? or more the technical level as well. Like for example, how did Commander Keen get started? Back when they were working for Apogee, they were making a game every month. It's, once again, if you're someone like me who kind of has a crush on John Carmack, this is a great book to read. And I think definitely this one is even better than Doom Guy Life in First Person because this is purely focused on the studio. Now, of course, keep in mind, some of these things, they're dated, like the 1980s, are over, the 1990s are over, but some of the concepts of how did they manage their studio and especially how did their studio get to their downfall can still be very interesting to learn from. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this book. I think if Doom Guy Life in First Person is a D tier, this is definitely more of a C tier. It's a good book. If you have any interest into the like general it software stuff, make this a B tier for you. This is a really good book to talk about that. And then the last book on our list is Game Programming Patterns by Robert Nystrom. So I, on purpose, left out books that were like very technical, like C++ programming and like making your own Raylib GL engine, because one, I've never read them, and two, the issue with books about those topics is that they often get outdated. I know C++ is a pretty stable language at this point, but especially books like, oh, make your first 2D platformer in Unity 2021 or something, they're not the greatest in my opinion, but where I made the exception here is with game programming patterns. This is a book that is not gonna change five years from now, 10 years from now. Most of the topics covered in the book are going to stay relevant and they're also language agnostic. These patterns can work in C Sharp, they can work in like Godot, GD script. They can even work with blueprints, which is C++ I guess behind the scenes. And another giant bonus thing that this book has is you can read all of it for free online. You don't even need to pay for it. So this is one of those books that if people ask me, how do I start with programming my game, like more of the technical aspect, I send them here. Like, first of all, have a first like basic knowledge of any language really, no matter what engine you're going for, C Sharp, Godot, Script, whatever. And then read this book, the game programming patterns, and apply the knowledge of that book to whatever engine you're using to make your games more modular, to apply the principles such as also, for example, Solid, to make sure that your code base is maintainable and you're not going to get technical debt or at least not mountains and piles of technical debt down the line because you didn't understand fully how your game should be made in the first place. Even for someone like me, this was a good book to read because keep in mind, I don't program really, but I still read this book because this is something that allows me to have a better understanding of what are the problems the rest of the team deals with. This is already something that I can come up with ideas. I can be like, hey, should this be a possible solution to the problem we're dealing with? And I think because of that, combined with the thing that it's completely free to read online, or you can buy the physical book if you want as well, I think this is one of those eight-year books as well that should really be read if you're like making any game that is not just purely made in a drag-and-drop editor. So those are some of the books that I have personally read, that I've personally enjoyed in terms of game development, game design, everything really related to game development. Like I said, if you want more of this book tier list, head on over to our Patreon where we have another video and a whole bunch of other previous videos we made as well about more in-depth stuff about running a business. I'm really curious as well, what are some of the books that I've missed here that maybe, okay, are like a C++ program or whatever, that you personally think are really important for a game developer to read? I really like to read books. If you are interested in more of like, what do I read? I'll also link my Goodreads down below so you can actually get a better idea of what are the 250 books I think at this point that I've read? You can see my ratings for them as well. So it gives you a bit more insight. I think definitely books can be a really good resource because what this forces you to do is to just think about what you're reading basically. If you watch a YouTube video, you can zone out. If you're reading a book, it's much harder to zone out, I think. You can still zone out if you're not a good reader, but the things that they are talked about in books are always gonna be much deeper usually than in YouTube videos, for example. So that's why I really enjoy them. 
Anyways, if you like this kind of content, more game development related, but not just pure programming, this is a channel for you. We make videos two times a week where we talk about game development, we talk about the things that we learn managing our studios, some of the different fuck ups we do that have, for example, led to us canceling our previous game. And I think this can definitely be a lot of value to you if you're planning on starting a studio on your own or starting to work on a game. So definitely head down below and subscribe as that way you get notified whenever we make these videos. That's all I had to say. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.